This it is, is time for the ranking. Everything. Now, now every week hosts, we do this, we'll Gary keep explaining it so that everybody understands where we're going with this. Uh, the ranking is a draft. We have got our own lists. Each of us has a top ten. And this week, we are drafting the top ten best active college football coaches not named Saban Meyer or Dabo. You can't pick those three. Okay. We already know that everybody loves those those three coaches. Mm, We're, I don't know that they make my top ten. Well. <laughs> None of them. All right. All right. So, it, it, did you go first last week or did I? Oh, you you went first last I week. I went you first. Tom. I'll let you go first. All right. So, I will go first this week. Number one on my top ten best active coaches is Chris Peterson. He is 129 and 29 with a .816 winning percentage. What he did at Boise State is remarkable. Look, Boise was was already good. Like they they've had a slew of of good coaches that have gone on to bigger things. But what he did completely changed that entire program and then what he has done at Washington so far. Look, he took a program that that really Look, under Tyrone Willingham, who had success at Notre Dame and all these other places, Stanford, everywhere else, Tyrone Willingham went 0-12 one year over there. Like, he, he wasn't able to win. Steve Sarkeesian, they were congratulating him on, on seven and five teams. This guy went 11-1, and 12-1, and one, won the Pac-12, got to the playoff a couple of years ago, went to a, a, a New Year's Six game last year. I love Chris Peterson at number one. No, absolutely. He's really, really good. He's on my list. He was not my number one, though. My number one is the crazy, psychotic, unpredictable pirate himself, Mike Leach. You like Mike Leach over everybody else? Everybody else. else. If you told me I could have any coach in the country to coach my LSU Tigers, I would literally push everybody else off the boat and claim him captain. No, why? Why is that? I why? just I, I like his quirkiness. I like the way he coaches. He coaches hard, man. Yeah, he does. That guy takes nothing for granted. He puts it all out there. Sometimes his players absolutely hate him, but everything he does, he truly believes is making them better. Okay, and it's and he's not afraid to be unconventional. He's not afraid to just. He's, Break a, he's every willing norm to try there everything. Is. Yes, he's he's there is no box for him to think in. He he's he's as outside of the box as it can be. I believe that is where great minds live. I believe that's where great success usually goes. Because of his quirkiness and is so outside the box, no major team will ever give him a chance. And I think that is a shame. I think if he could play with LSU, Old Miss, Alabama style players, quality talent. I think he would wreck college football. All right, so we've seen Mike Leach in two different places. We've seen Chris Peterson in two different places. Number three, I've got Chip Kelly. Now, we've only seen him at Oregon. It Even in the NFL, he was successful for a time. Like, this guy... It, it, oh, in can, the NFL, successful for a time. Every year he had a winning record. Well, other than San his, Francisco. His, San Francisco, oh, he went yeah, like 1-15. I don't right? even so, remember that he was in San Francisco. So, well, he was only so, there for a year. But um, his, his days in Philly, he made the playoffs. He took yeah. a garbage team. To the playoffs. He won like 10 he, games. And, and you want to talk about somebody unconventional? Yeah. Like, he was not scared to cut the best player on the team. And Correct. whatnot. if he didn't flow with what they wanted, That's right. then he knew, gone. He knew Shady was a piece of trash. I'm not going to say that Shady's a piece of trash until we hear everything You're that right. comes out. He but could easily not be. He could easily not, not be. But because it, it, especially after the Reuben Foster stuff, right? He, he um, is suspect. Chip Kelly was forty six and seven in just a few seasons with a point eight six eight winning percentage. Yeah. Like he no, looks crazy good. We'll see what he can do at UCLA. But imagine what he could do at UCLA with the talent that they could get in Los Angeles. I don't I, know. See, this is where we differ. I don't think UCLA can recruit any different than Oregon. I just you might don't. be right. I think like, with here's, the resources that Nike brings to Oregon, everybody they can forgets. recruit like anybody else. Everybody forgets that Chip Kelly had NCAA problems because of his ties to, you know, the seven on seven coaches down in Texas. So Willie Lyles got him in a whole mess of trouble down there. But look, the guy understands you got to cut corners to win. 
Like, you got to figure out ways to get players we, into we your program. We all know how the sausage is made in college yes. sports. So, and Chip Kelly gets it. Chip Kelly knows how to win. Like he took Oregon to a national championship game. That's right. Now, and, and he set them up for years afterwards. That's right. He, so, he was able to leave, and lesser coaches could continue to win there. Exactly. Number four, my next guy up, Gary Patterson. Now, this, nice. this, this might be my favorite stand. Mike Leach is a little crazy, a lot crazy. I like that he's crazy. Gary Patterson is the model of consistency, and I just I think he's one of the best coaches in college football. I, I would agree with that. absolutely do anything to have this guy run a program that I love. My my number three on here, which will be our number five. You know, I'm going to skip him for now. I'm going to skip this for now. I'm going to move on to uh, my number four guy, James Franklin. If you can win at Vanderbilt, like I know that you can win at big time programs. He is in a conference, that, in, in a division That's right. that is big boys. comparable to the SEC West, and he has won the conference no, already. That, that division has been over the last couple of years better than the SEC West. Yes, in in, in recent times, absolutely. Ohio State, Michigan, With, Penn Wisconsin, State, Michigan, Michigan State. Ohio State, and Penn State. Well, are better than everybody. Wisconsin's in the SEC. not in their division, but they're in. Oh, the, that's right. Yeah, they're not. in the same the, conference. The, the other three are better than all the SEC West teams, not name Alabama. Yeah. Consistently, the last couple of years. Yes, I, I agree with that. But James Franklin, he's sixty and thirty-two overall, a uh, a sixty-five percent winning percentage. Look, the guy is awesome. It, if you can win at Vanderbilt, in my mind, you can win anywhere. So props to that, James Franklin. I got at number five. Number six, my number three guy, Jim Harbaugh, has to be on this list. Jim Harbaugh took over a an academic. Sta- uh, the, the equivalency of Vanderbilt in Stanford. Stanford hasn't done anything since John Elway played there. And he takes that over. I, I wish Harbaugh had a, had more success at Michigan nas- so far. Now, that's garbage, man. You don't realize how bad a program Brady Hoke left that place. It takes time to take over someplace that has been completely decimated with talent and problems for a decade. Brady Hook went 10 and 2 like the year before he got fired. It I'm telling you that team Like you did you don't not, think that James Franklin taken over Penn State in the shape that they were in like it, and he won a Big 10 championship the in 3 years. When Bill O'Brien cleaned that place up, not James Franklin. Bill O'Brien cleaned that up before okay. some Franklin got there. And Bill O'Brien left left that place in a super cush situation. Okay. 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 I'll, I'll so, give you that. So, don't question me on the Big Ten now. <laughs> I like the Big Ten. I follow Big Ten football, okay? Woo! All right. Come on right. now. Um, but, now I, I think Jim Harbaugh is one of the – we criticize him because he has to play Ohio State, Michigan State, Penn State, and, and beat them every year. And if he doesn't, he's a failure. Those are three of the best programs in the country. Nobody in the country beats those three teams or any caliber of those three teams every year. Alabama hasn't beaten three teams as good as Ohio State, Michigan State, or Penn State every year because they don't play those teams. Uh, I don't and know, nobody man. in the SEC has been that level of good. They they, okay, so they, they don't play them in the regular season every year. But, I mean, my gosh, like – Clemson, well, in the uh, national championship, but I'm Georgia. talking about to get there. You don't, you didn't play, you didn't play Georgia in the regular season. No. You didn't play Georgia in the SEC championship because you didn't make it to the SEC championship. No, I'm with you. I'm you with played you. Auburn, you got beat by Auburn. I, so, I understand where you're coming from. So it, that that we don't not. It used to be a big deal because it was Texas A&M, uh, uh, LSU, Alabama, right. and those schools know. just aren't the same anymore. They're yeah. just not. So to knock him for not beating those teams, and and let's remember how bad that offense was. Oh yeah, he's he's two crazy plays away from beating Ohio State That's and true. Michigan State and making the college playoff his first year. That's true. His first year. So this ball bounce is funny, and sometimes it's going to bounce against you. And that was with a garbage offense that he inherited. I mean, just a trash offense. Well, he's had three years to clean it up. So let, let's see what he does this year. Uh, he's supposed to be the quarterback guru guy, but he hadn't been able to find one. Let's let's see what Shea Patterson does. Uh, next up for me, look, I, I'm going to go on and throw him in here. Uh, I think Kirby Smart knows what he's doing. I, I've got Kirby Smart at number seven. He's 21 and seven in in two seasons. He's already made it to a national championship game. The guy 
can flat out recruit. He is at a hot spot for recruiting. So if you got the guys, then if you can teach them, if you can coach them, then you're going to be pretty successful. I'm not going to knock Kirby. I, I spent all last year knocking. I just don't know that you can make a list like this. We're talking about top ten active coaches with one year under your belt. Well, he's got two, but uh, okay. You know, so, so like let's sample let's, size is okay. pretty rough. Let's cut and then Kirby you got smart. An, you got another dude on here that I think doesn't belong in the top fifty best coaches in the college football. That's different, but that's okay. Let's let's toss out James Frank, or let's toss out uh, Kirby Smart. Okay. All right, we'll pick, move pick on. A, pick another. You get another draft pick. I'll jump in with mm, Sam. So go ahead. Do it. All right, I'll say David Shaw. That's just such a garbage pick. That's not a garbage pick. And you pick. got him fifth. You got him fifth out of all your coaches in the country, David Shaw. I think that David Shaw understands how you win football games. He, you run the football, he, you stop the run. took over a program that Jim Harbaugh left just – obscenely grossed with talent. And every year that Harbaugh's guys have left, every year he has progressively gotten worse and worse and worse. I don't think that's right. I don't think it's every year. Like, look, he So is, one year he went like 10 games, the next year he won nine, the next year he wins eight, and the next year he wins nine again. And so that's a bounce back year. That ain't a great coach, man. Look, he David plays Shaw, in the Pac-12 where he, nobody is good but three teams. He's 73 and 22. With a 76%, well, almost 77% winning percentage. What's his last two years? His last two, two years. Give me two two years. Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up. All right. Here's what he has done. 11-2, and 12-2, and 11-3, and 8-5. Perfect. And five, Perfect. All those tw- guys here at Harbaugh. So now his fourth year is his first year with all his guys. Okay. Fourth year he went 8-5. and five. Okay. Then he went 12-2. and two, Got it. And he won the, uh, the Pac-12. Got it. Then he went ten and three, and then last year was nine and five. Okay. I think he's good. I, I just don't. I don't. I don't know I how abs- you could disagree with David Shaw. I just don't. That's crazy. I don't think he's good. I don't, crazy I don't, talk. I don't, I don't respect it at all. Like you, you got Mike Leach at the top of this thing. Mike, and Mike you, Leach. You're going to say that David Mike Leach Shaw, doesn't even get to play close to the talent of David Shaw. If Mike Leach could take over at Stanford, oh my God, he would look, destroy the Pac-12. So he's been there for seven seasons. Is that right? Seven? Yeah. He has won the Pac twelve North in five seasons. Okay. You got Jim Harbaugh ranked before him and Harbaugh's finished third in two seasons. In three. Three okay. straight years. Okay. So But but you're looking at small sample size, I'm looking at whole careers. Jim Harbaugh was was five seconds away from winning the Super Bowl with Colin Kaepernick. All right, you you do have a point on that. Like like you're talking about coaches, right? Right. You, you're looking at little resume, and I'm looking at everything they've done as a coach. I understand where you're coming from, but I, what I'm saying is David Shaw, even after all of Harbaugh's guys got gone, Harbaugh is the one that taught David Shaw how to how coach. To coach. I, I I I don't disagree with that. He's just not as good. He's That's, just okay. not. Okay. And there there are 20 coaches in the in the conf, in the country better than him. There just are. I just don't buy that. So I, I don't. Anyway, look. Uh, let's see. We're let's gonna just, disagree. My next coach up is is I've talked about him earlier today. It's Bill Clark. I think Bill Clark is one of the best football coaches in the country. I think this guy is a defensive genius. I think he knows how to coach college kids. I think he knows how to get them to buy into a program and believe that they can beat anybody even when they are not anywhere close to the caliber of the kids across from them. I think if he had the chance to coach real talent and not UAB talent that went a whole year without a football program, in essence gave themselves a death penalty because of Alabama, like this is, this is just ridiculous. This guy is one of the best coaches in the country. He's one of the best coaches in the country, and I got him this far under Jim Harbaugh, this far. I'm not going to disagree with Bill Clark. I like Bill Clark. Uh, number nine for me, Jimbo Fisher. Now I love Jimbo. I had to think a long time about this because he went 27 and one with Jameis Winston, and in college, Jameis was one of those transcendent talents, yeah, right? Like correct. he, the second year they came back in like seven games, like they were they were down in the fourth quarter and came back to win, and then they just got obliterated by Oregon and, and Marcus Mariota. 
Uh, that was Mark Helfrich's team. But look, either way, Jimbo Fisher as a head coach, he's eighty three and twenty three. That's a seventy eight percent winning percentage. That is way up the ladder. Uh, he is one of only four guys right now that has a national championship. You got Dabo, Saban, Urban Meyer, and then Jimbo. How we don't have Jimbo Fisher higher on this? Like I, I think well, the Jameis Winston thing. I was about to say w- without Jameis is a is a legit knock. Right. He didn't so make my top ten because that's a that's a. Re- I look, don't it, like so he's eighty three in sample sizes. Right. Just because you do something really good with a transcendent player, I mean. Well, with, if we looked at that, like then Gene Chizik would be one of the greatest right. coaches that's right. ever. Right. Because he, he went undefeated because he got Cam Newton, and then all right, look, Jimbo he's is fired. he's eighty three and twenty three. So take away the Jameis Winston stuff, and he is what fifty six and twenty two. That's right. Which is not nearly it's as not high. Great. It, when you. In college football, where it's set up for the big boys to go eight and four or nine and three every year, then then you can't have a losing record of of, of the winning percentage that he has without uh, Jameis. Right, right, all right. So Jimbo Fisher at number nine. He wouldn't have made mine. All right, I'm going off kilter because I've got a few guys here that I like. We'll talk about them in the honorable mentions. But if I've got one last guy to give, I'm giving it to Justin Fuente. And I think that people in the SEC better buckle up. This guy has done You great. mean the ACC? ACC, yes. Sorry. This guy has done really good things, and um, I think that program is just going to get better and better. He's just getting his feet wet. I think they're going to be good. I this, think they're going to be good, too. This year? Like oh, I, I, I don't know about this year. I think uh, oh. they, they could – well, you know, we're going to do an ACC preview. We'll, we'll figure that out. I, I don't know that they're going to be great this season. I think the schedule kind of sets up against them a little bit, but we'll I'm we'll not, get to that. I don't care about schedules, but I, I, I do like coaches. Fuente. I think that he he leaves very strong foundations on programs, and he has already built a good foundation there. Yep. And so yeah, there's a lot. Uh, let's let's talk some honorable mentions. Um, look, I, I'll read off the three of mine that I that I didn't name. So it, Kirby Smart, we threw out. He's only got two years, small sample size. Uh, Scott Frost, two years, small sample size. I, I still think he's going to be really good, but we'll Got see. It. Yeah. Uh, Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern. I love him. I think if he was anywhere other than Northwestern, he'd be getting a lot I, more. Pub. I think he'd be a lot. Like he'd have a lot more wins. He's eighty-seven and sixty-five. It's fifty-seven percent winning. Oh, you percentage. can't look at winning percentage when you're looking at smaller coaches. But smaller but even school still, coaches. Like, look, if you've been at Northwestern for that long and you got eighty-seven wins, oh, it's big. Like that's that's good. And he's got some big boy wins too. He's got some trophies on his on his uh, desk for, for some for some heads. He's killed. Uh, Neil Brown at Troy. That, uh, he's on my list. And so uh, he's twenty-five and thirteen. The Smart, fact, it's only three years. The but, fact that Neil and Bill Clark didn't didn't get jobs last year. Make me hate the college football system. Yeah, I just I just despise it. Those guys should be at big boy programs. Who else have you got on honorable mention? A guy that I love, and his program is getting getting trashed right now, and it's a hard place to coach. Mike D- Mark D'Antonio is is one of the just ultimate football guys that yeah. I have grown up. My entire, I feel like he's been coaching there my whole life. He uh, um, he understands how to win games, and and I I just like the way he goes about coaching team. His teams are always a hard knock. Are they ever great? No. Are they ever going to finish in the top two or three of the, of the country? Probably not. But that guy is a guy you don't want to coach against. I mean, the guy's already made a playoff with Michigan State. Like that's yeah, that's no, they're rough. Big. And then we we cannot do a top ten. All time co or active coaches right now without having the flying mullet, my Gundy on there. <laughs> you just can't have it. That guy, yeah. a can coach some football, and he's a football dude. I got more football guys on. I care more about how you. I don't know. I think I think I care more about certain things than wins and losses necessarily. I don't care about that. I, if I don't believe in you being a football guy, you just don't get to make my list. I okay. I'm with that. I'm with that. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Let's do the top ten real quick. Uh, Chris Peterson, number one. Number two, Mike Leach. Number three, Chip Kelly. Number four, Gary Patterson. Five, James Franklin. Six, Jim Harbaugh. Seven, David Shaw. Eight, Bill Clark. Nine, Jimbo Fisher. Number ten, Justin Fuente. Uh, 